We've been talking a little bit about the the rat utopia experiment. Have you ever heard of that? No, it sounds lovely. I don't know. I don't know too much about it, other than um, people have chatted us about it. But the general premise was that they created the space where they put a bunch of rats in this, you know, terrarium kind of thing, unlimited food and water, mm-hmm. not a care in the world, no threats, and eventually they populated to a certain point. Then they started becoming. And they started changing. Some stopped having sex altogether. Some stopped eating. Some just started dying. I think some like started becoming cannibals. It was like yeah. a really brutal. Once they reached a certain level of, of crowding and population, weird things started happening in their rat society. Mm-hmm. I wonder if humans have reached a point like that. And I think that's why people bring it up to where maybe the reason we're not having families anymore is because we got we got a ton of people on the planet as it is especially psychologically with social media i in the early days i was like oh facebook good i'm going to get all my friends on facebook and then i'm going to be able to i'll be able to message everybody at once and then i can throw a big party where i have everyone to my house and then all of a sudden i had like 170 people 300 people and i didn't talk to any of them mm. i was but so overwhelmed that's, and that's like one of the things that said happened with the rat utopia experiments right. they would like crowd in areas just like in weird ways but I wonder if what happens is, you know, we used to have kids out of necessity. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it, that's why if you look at less developed nations, they have lots of kids mm-hmm. because the kids do jobs. Right. But now we got washing machines, we got dishwashers, we got stoves, we got clean running water in the cities. So you don't need to have kids. Maybe it's just a natural state of life where you find this equilibrium point where you just don't need to have kids. So there's no real drive to do it. No, no woman, no woman goes through childbirth because she needs it. I mean that, like, maybe because she but, but, because it's a because it's not. This is like she's literally putting her life in danger. Women have an an a existential like in her body, like everything. Not all women, most women, to have a child. We do you think it's every month? We have a violent <laughs> reminder. Yeah, it's great. Of our evolutionary, you know, role. And it's not it's not the patriarchy that created menstruation, right? We have but I, it. But I'm not saying that like women sit there and think to themselves, like, I'm gonna have a kid because I need to have a kid. I'm just saying that pressures begin to appear to not have kids once a, once a certain level in a, in a population size or, re, or amount of resources, and then it just becomes less feasible for people to do. That's definitely the case for men. I mean, we used to spread our seed to as many women as possible, and now that's been become taboo mm-hmm. in society. So that's an example of not overpopulating. Is it taboo? For the most part, polygamy is kind of looked down upon in modern yeah, but America. Yeah, pr- but pr- uh, promiscuity is through the roof. But not I mean, having look children at- all over the place. Definitely doing it i mean yeah i guess you'd, you'd be frowned upon in any capacity the old trope was that the guy would be chased out of the farmhouse by the dad with the shotgun you know who was sleeping with the farmer's daughter or whatever all the alimony yeah. well it was because you have to make sh- like shotgun wedding you know you're gonna take care of this kid and you've you've just committed yourself to doing it these days it's like swipe on tinder you just sit there and you swipe non-stop and then you do whatever you want and it's encouraged Back in the old day, like I'm thinking of Zeus, you know, all these ancient, where he had like 40 kids and then he had kids with his kids that like, just, <laughs> because they needed to populate, they were like yeah, well, recovering from a those flood. Are, those are stories. Yeah. But, but that I guy, think, like, didn't he turn himself into a duck and then bang a woman a goose, or something? Yeah. Wow. Swan, yeah. Brutal. What a weird, no, I didn't. What a weird. weird story. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it was real. Maybe it wasn't. But I think that that behavior wasn't so taboo as it is today. And where, so whereas women have the burning desire to have children, Men have the burning desire to have to spread their seed, and we've had to kind of culturally subdue that because it doesn't mix with modern day, you know, society. Like too many kids without fathers would be very bad for society. Well, it is I, bad. It's bad for the kids. Kids who are born with who don't have a father, father figure in the household, are more likely to be poor, more likely not to graduate high school, more likely to end up in jail. So men have a very important role in society. And again, it just keeps, you've asked, you know, well, what can we do? And unfortunately, you know, it's too late for the millennial and Gen X generations to change that. Although certainly men can stand up and do better and they can raise, they can be there for boys. And even if you're not a father, if you're an uncle or if you're a friend of the family, you could be there for a boy and you can help raise that boy. That is such a gift to that boy because that boy will grow up to reach his potential if he has that but 
Um, unfortunately, we have, you know, kids who aren't growing up without dads and it just keeps, you know, going around and around the same circle. Um, so I, I, look, again, women generally want to be moms, not all women. Women want to be moms and it is, it is devastating when she's doing everything she can. She's doing all the right things. She's contributing to society. It's like she's doing everything she can. And I agree with you that a guy who's, you know, her equal in terms of, you know, career, income, what have you, he, you know, she's 35, he's 35, he can easily marry a 25-year-old. What happened to her, right? So it is, but it's devastating to those women. The level of, of I mean, I've, I have grieved not having children. I'm I'm beyond hope of having children and so I've moved on from that but certainly I mean and it's and it's elongated now because it used to be that a woman you know hit a certain age 40 plus or minus she was no longer fertile couldn't have children but today let's say egg freezing well there's still hope or even IVF there's still hope all this technology people will tell you oh but my kids my cousin's sister's neighbor had twins at 45 still hope so what does that do it creates this longer time of grief for this woman and it's really hard so I, I I'm again a champion of boys and I think we need to go back and look at education how we are educating boys how we're making sure that they have male role models how we're letting them play encouraging them to play all of those things right I think that we also on the men's side need to be a little bit more sympathetic to women they're not desperate because they really want to go out with you again because they like you. They're not desperate because they want to have a baby and they're 36. They're women and they want to be moms and that's perfectly normal and it doesn't make them weak. It makes them strong to be able to admit that that's what they want. And if you're a guy who's going to lead a woman on and just because, you know, you don't really want I don't know, well, maybe we'll try, well, maybe next year, well, when I get a race, you know what? Her fertility doesn't have time for your excuses. So if you love her or if you don't love her, let her go or get married and be a man. So th there's a, I guess it's a stereotype. Maybe there's actual data behind this. I've not read it, read it that men tend to be goal oriented and women tend to be social oriented. So a guy der derives his joy from accomplishing something in that dopamine hit, whereas women from social acceptance. And I don't know if that's true, but it does kind of play into the story about how young women are becoming depressed because of social media. Mm -hmm. They go on Instagram, they take a, they take a selfie, they post it. It doesn't get enough likes. They delete it right away. And it does affect guys, but not as much. Sure. I've noticed something really interesting when I, when I watch skateboarding videos on Instagram. I noticed that there are a lot of videos of guys skateboarding. And actually, you know what? I'm not even talking about skateboarding. When guys take photos of things or when they post things, that's an object. Yeah. When women do it, it's of them. Of course. Yeah. So I even know female journalists and mm -hmm. it's the weirdest thing to me yeah. where they're like on the ground in the Middle East and they're taking a selfie yeah. of themselves with mm -hmm. like the thing in the background. And I'm like, just show the tank like, you know, and then what guys do is they'll post a video of just the tank with themselves not in it. Yeah. So I, I wonder if that also plays a very serious role in that the reason women are hyper focusing on work is because society, mm -hmm. because of what would be deemed acceptable. And this is stemming from... When you look at news media and cultural media, the women who are working these jobs are mostly career women, not all of them. And then you end up with a tendency to only get the positive social message from women who are not married, who are working careers, then telling younger women, this is the right way to do it. This is what's great. And because of the social pressure, they do. And that's perpetuating this, this cycle. Yeah. There are no career women. It's not like women are choosing to have a career. Women have to work. We do. What else are we supposed to do? Get married at a young age, I guess. And siphon off the man. So, or have a traditional family. I'm not, I guess, raising know. a kid's worth more than money. That's for sure. But it's not like they're choosing career over love, marriage, and motherhood. I didn't do that. Most women aren't doing that. Well, what's, why, what's stopping them from having a, a relationship then so my mom actually asked me this because she and i were talking about millennial women and why they don't really appear to want to get married and or have kids and i said mom we can't afford to 
Mm-hmm. We can't afford yes. rent. True. Where we were living, rent was like fourteen or fifteen hundred bucks a month, and I was like, "There's no way to afford rent and also have children unless you are both working." And I was like, "I don't want to do that. I want to be able to actually raise my kids, and that means like part time work or not working at all and being mm-hmm. like a stay at home mom." Right. It's very much a matter of money. I think you're right. Yeah. No, it I, is. I, it's I, economics. But, but you, how did how did how did the families do it? I don't know. Three hundred years ago. It, we, we walk into the woods with a sh- yeah. Sharp, we don't have that anymore. The economy today means that most most women and men have to work what else are we going to do and especially when a woman why shouldn't a woman work why shouldn't a woman have a career it's and it, i don't mean this in the feminist way i'm in the you know traditional feminist way i just mean it like why not you know that's not feminism that's just being human like why shouldn't she reach her potential that doesn't mean that she like for instance again me right I very much wanted to be married and have children. I had a baby name book when I was 12. I mean, I had planned my wedding in my family backyard. I, this was what I wanted. And it didn't happen, not because I didn't want it. But if I didn't have as well, like when I was in my late 30s, that's when I decided to create my own company. Because I didn't know if I was going to have some legacy. And that's in the end part of why we have children. We want to know we're going to leave something. We want, if it's not literal DNA, then maybe it's some sort of intellectual DNA. There's something we can leave behind. And so that's why women have careers, because they need to be able to pay the rent, et cetera. And, and by the way, if they do meet a guy, he's divorced because the 22-year-old he married really wasn't exactly what he needed because she didn't really, she was much more interested in her body and her selfies than in him and in helping him be the best he can be. And he then finds this, you know, 40 year old woman who's amazing because they're the same age and actually share the same conversations, intellect, experience, et cetera. And, and he's, well, okay, well, we'll have a kid together. Okay. But where was she going to get the money for the IVF or for the eggs that she froze? I mean, careers pay for things. And part of it is it, it gives her a safety net for her fertility. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash Timcast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and if you want exclusive members-only content, segments you can't get anywhere else, go to timcast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.